and you will have some time also for Q&A. All right, welcome everybody to this member call on how to ruin employee advocacy. Uh, thank you very much, Anne Frost, for joining us from actually very near Aarhus. Uh, but let me hand it over to you so we can spend the time on this interesting topic. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, the brief on this was that there is a there is a, a high maturity in this group of people when when it comes to uh, communications and tech in general and, and digital communication and all this. So this is not going to be a uh, what is employee advocacy and uh, how to start and blah, blah, blah. This is going to be uh, me telling you about how I've experienced employee advocacy working with it in, uh, in larger companies uh, the last five, six years as an external consultant. And um, and Janus told me uh, when we talked about this that uh, it was uh, it was okay if I uh, if I was a little bit provocative. So if any of you work with marketing or corporate communications, I would like to apologize already. But it's all set with an amount amount of love. No matter what I say, know that I mean it well, and that of course these these are my experiences. So we cannot lift this up to any uh, universal uh, law or rule. But this is the tendencies that I see. The last ten minutes of this session is going to be uh, Q and A, or, uh, or people uh, throwing stuff at me and shouting at me and telling that I'm wrong, debating. I'm open for that as well. So um, so first. We'll, uh, we'll get tired of hearing my voice in 20 minutes, and then it'll be your voices, mainly. And Janos, uh, you, you're welcome to interrupt me if there is uh, relevant questions and stuff like that. Uh, if, if I can have you watch the chat while we, uh, while we do that, that would be perfect. All right, so how to ruin employee advocacy in three easy steps, because it is rather easy to ruin employee advocacy, in my experience. First, I would like to tell you that in the last five or six years, what I experienced is that employee advocacy went from being a marketing thing to being an HR employer branding thing. I don't know if you guys uh, have seen the same movement as well, but it was very much, in the beginning, it was very much about social media and what social media uh, would allow us to do. So it was about distributing content, mainly. But since it moved over into HR in a more employer branding way, it, there is more focus now on the individual and on the organization and on the people and the authenticity that we actually want to uh, <laughs> that we actually want to to have our employees represent. Which I personally think I'm a big EA fan and idealist. I think it's a, I think it's a healthy movement. But this brings me to the three easy steps to ruin employee advocacy. It is treat it as a project, then have marketing run it, and then finally ask corporate communications for their opinion. Whoopsie, then it's ruined. And I'll take you through why I think these are the three easy steps. Treat it as a EA project. This is typically what you would do when you start out, you get budget, for a EA project, which means it has a beginning and it has an ending, and then we'll see what data we have. Is it worth working with? Did it, uh, did it have the impact that we wanted? What people would usually do, or what people will usually do, is do some key ambassadors so they know how, who to train. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's a matter of religion, I almost said, that it, not, not the, um, some people want to roll out to entire organizations. Now you just talked about an organization before with 500,000 people working globally. I think that would be a little bit overkill starting out by doing that. But other people choose to make a pilot and choose the, the, the chosen holy few who are already, who are already ambassadors and are already living ambassador lives online with their personal profiles. So you do that, you pimp profiles, make sure it all looks good, you have the nice headers, the banners, you have the nice titles, you have the thumbnails with the company logo and 
Then you'll do how-to workshops so they'll know how LinkedIn functions are and you'll produce guidelines and rules so nobody crosses the line and you'll have nice, cozy family engagement, <laughs> I would call it. No, so that everybody would follow corporate rules and, um, and, and nobody will uh, offend anybody and, and get in trouble. Online tutorials, always good. Then you can mass distribute it to all over the world, wherever your employees are. And then you have this massive content hub so that the employees can go in and have corporate content and, uh, and, and be the ambassadors and tell the stories that you planned in marketing. And then you choose a EA platform, could be Smart, could be some HubSpot stuff, could be uh, LinkedIn used to have something called Elevate. That will make it easy for you to send an email every Monday to your ambassadors telling them this is the new content that you can choose to spread to the world on the internet, and um, and then maybe uh, some of them have these uh, have these functions where you can uh, you can put a little uh, a little text that make it personal, so that you sit in uh, in corporate marketing and say, I have a job uh, ad for instance, you say, come be my colleague, we have fun at our workplace, and um, lunch is good, and uh, and um, colleagues are nice, whatever. And then you would have, <laughs> that's what I hear at least, with these, uh, with these platforms, then you would have 10, 100, how many ambassadors you have, post the exact same very personal text with the, with the job ad. And that is, of course, a problem. But as soon as you've done all this, and this is what you got the budget to do, this is what you, 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 you are sponsored to do, because this is how we usually start, because it's ambassador, it's personal profiles, it's social media, it's employee advocacy, but then nothing happens. Nobody posts anything. Nobody responds to the mails that you send out through your expensive uh, EA platform. Nobody comes up with their own stories. Uh, nobody shares, nobody comments, nobody, uh, nobody interacts at all. Even though you actually trained them and you gave them all the software that they needed To, to make it easy. Now, I cannot see your faces right now, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I would like to see whether you would agree, whether you've been there, because I've been there a few times. So the thing, oh, sorry, this is the wrong one. What I would like you to do instead of looking at employee advocacy as a project is to look at it as organizational change. It is employees We have to behave differently and think differently. That is organizational change. And organizational change sounds like lots of money, lots of time, lots of hassle, and it is, but it pays out. This is from a, uh, this is from uh, Epi Müller, who's also a, a fairly big company who, uh, who did uh, employee advocacy back in 2018. Uh, they tried out, feeling if, if it was if it was their thing, and one of the genius things they did was that they did a uh, employee uh, engagement or employee satisfaction survey at forehand, and then they uh, and then they did the same measuring later on in in the in the in the pilot. And what this is what they found out, and 74% of employees using uh, employee advocacy feeling more engaged with the company and stronger loyalty and, and stronger relations with the people working in, uh, in other areas of the world or other branches of, of the company than they do themselves. 74%, yeah, 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 that's a lot. Let's just divide it in two and say that, I mean, these are their own numbers, so it, it's fair to be, uh, to be a little bit critic to it, but let's say... They just have. Then it's still, then it's still organizational change, and then it's still fairly high number by actually just telling people it's okay that you, on your personal profile, that you already have, talk about the job that you have. And what happens within the brain is that if you are focusing on seeing what is the value that we add to our customers, what is it that we're proud of, what is it that I'm actually good at in my job, 
if you train your brain to look for that during your workday because you have to post about it because you have to uh, because you have to uh, actually be able to tell other people about it then it becomes visible in a in in a in a whole new way and it's um it's like these uh, gratitude uh, things that people do write down three things every night that that you're grateful for then actually you become a grateful person. You become a happier person. You have a happier life. So you train your brain to look for the good stuff. Then all of a sudden, everything looks better. So it's not magic, uh, but it works. Oh, I have to have to remember the time. I don't know if you can feel it, but I am very, uh, I'm very happy about talking about employee advocacy. You're doing good. <laughs> Thank you. Have marketing run it. Now, I didn't get to see how many people who are here from marketing, but the thing is that marketing people know stuff. For instance, they know how many people who uh, watch LinkedIn on their phones with the sound turned off. So when you know that, of course, you're going to produce content with subtitles on it. With, uh, and, and that means you have well-produced, Good uh, marketing content, but this is not employee advocacy. Reaching the audience and knowing the audience and helping and feeling and loving the audience, it's not employee advocacy. We have to stop thinking audience because it's actually people's network. It's, it's real relationship that people have with other people. And it's not an audience. And you know it yourself, I'm sure, that you don't like to be, you, like, you don't like to be sold to, and especially not by someone uh, pretending to be a real person with, with digital eye contact, looking at you, someone that you probably met, someone that you maybe work with, someone whose tone of voice or way of being in the world that you know. As soon as you get the logo on, as soon as you get the subtitles on, as soon as you get the blurry background and the good skin filter and all this stuff, you can see that this is not something this person woke up this morning and just wanted to tell to his or her network. This is one of the problems with getting through marketing. And we have, this is, uh, this is in a Danish context with uh, 4,000 4, 4, people uh, participating in this. It's from 2017. But it's just to say that the least credible thing are ads. And the most credible thing are employees. And marketing would uh, mostly have KPIs talking into reach or engagement or traffic on the website or leads or whatever. And those are marketing KPIs and they are not employee relationship KPIs. And it's good that the employees are critical about what they want to send out into the network because it's their credibility that we're actually relying on. So we have to help them keep it. And that can be difficult if what you actually get paid to do is something else, which is one of the paradoxes in employee advocacy and marketing, working together. I'm not saying hashtag not all marketing. Yeah, and, and talking about hashtags. You can also see when big corporations start their employee advocacy program, usually the first thing they do is that they develop a campaign hashtag. And nobody in the world looks at corporate internal hashtags apart from marketing who have to measure how many people did actually post. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. You can, of course, use hashtags, but use relevant hashtags that actually get you uh, into the right conversations with people you don't already talk to about these subjects. To get out to the communities and actually to exchange knowledge and to get new professional relations and so on. Hashtags are a fine thing, but it's just keep on, keep on inventing all these corporate hashtags. It's just a signal that this is a campaign and this is not genuine uh, employee uh, content. Ask corporate comps for their opinion. This is my picture of corporate communication. And that is two-sided because one thing is 
the reason why nothing happens when you start out with your employee advocacy thingy and you did all the right things and you gave people everything you thought they needed, all the tools, is that they are afraid. They are afraid of saying something wrong. They are afraid of uh, them being sanctioned for saying something that legal don't want them to say or saying something that someone else will call out as stupid or yeah, wrong or whatever. People are super afraid, and you probably know it from yourself, that you sit there and you make your post and you just, uh, is this good? Can I, uh, can I say it like this? Can this be misinterpreted? And, and we all have this thing, and that's okay. That's just part of being human. We like to belong. We like to be uh, like the crowd to love us, and, and, and that's fine, but we have to respect it. That's, one of, that's the one bear staring into our, into our faces when we do employee advocacy. The other bear is communication. And communication is, corporate communication, in my experience, can be the place where authenticity goes to die. Uh, and, and in really large companies, they often sit right next to legal and they look very similar. And it's about rules and it's about control and it's about, uh, it's about reputation management. So of course, they don't want us amateurs running around just saying stuff, not knowing anything about communication. It makes sense because that's what their KPIs are. So just having a bunch of out of control monkeys on the internet is not a dream for corporate communications. So my uh, advice is don't involve them until you have to. Because if you start out by having corporate communications build your employee advocacy program because you want to break down silos and you want to work, uh, with the people from all over the organization and blah, blah, blah. Just be a little bit careful with corporate communications. That's all I'm saying. What you should do instead is that you should get top management on board because that is a fear reducer number one. Corporate communications, they want to make guidelines and they want to make rules. The best guideline that you can have is to have top management on board. The very best thing is if you can have them actually post online to show this is how we do, this is what we do, this is something that we actually do prioritize to use time on, to spend time on. This is uh, how we uh, are in dialogue with people if, uh, if someone uh, comes a little bit hard on us. And, you know, being able to read that this is what top management does makes it so much more easy for the rest of the organization to get their shoulders down and say, okay, they actually mean it. We're actually allowed to do that. And, and they actually appreciate that we do it. And this is actually how we do. So as a one thing, if you can get top management to do that, you are lucky and you're good and you're talented because that's really hard because they, uh, they have the vein as well. as well. So, um, so it, it can be difficult to get, to get out there. But the other thing is that you can have them communicate internally about them backing up the fact that we do employee advocacy and that we're trying to work with our transparency. Have them use the internet if you're using an internet or having send mails to the ambassadors that you're working with or have them do it on a town hall, say we have this, uh, we have this thing going and uh, it's new to all of us and uh, we're just curious and try stuff out and just have them say that they know it's difficult. That's why they're not out there doing the whole employee advocacy dance themselves all over LinkedIn, but they support it. And, and this is not dangerous. This is just new. And that's not necessarily the same. It looks like the same, be the same bear, but it isn't. And then the last, my, my final uh, pray to all of you is that you remember that this has to be the employees volunteering. This cannot be a strategy that lives for the strategy itself. If the, if the employees are not on board willingly, this is going to be a mess. And we're going to go back to the thing saying that the least credible thing are ads. And then we're just turning our employees into ads. And then we'll stop being able to actually use their credibility for anything because they won't have it anymore. 
So these were the three easy steps. And and of course I have to uh, I have to offer you the other side of the mirror, and that is treat it as an organizational change instead of a project, because it is and it takes a long time and it is a hassle, but it pays off. Have HR run it instead of uh, instead of marketing and ask top management for their support. If not out on the internet, then inside the organization on the internet. That'll be my five cents. Great, thank you very much. Uh, excellent, Anna. So happy we could do this and you could find the time in your busy calendar. Um, we had a little bit chat going on. Uh, I went down the rapid hole of coming up with hashtags, uh, but on a more serious note, uh, our European friend Peter, he wrote, top management is usually too busy which made me think of the fear goes up, <laughs> fear goes down. Yeah, top management are usually too busy, but uh, then we'll have to um, challenge them on that because no matter if you have a small or large company, one of the main strategic uh, objects these, these days are retaining and attracting talent. And as a top manager, if you're too busy to contribute to that work, I don't know what you're busy doing, but you're busy doing the wrong thing. There you go. <laughs> uh, anybody else cares to comment, uh, disagree uh, or agree? Uh, just curious to hear some reflections. Uh, also, of course, feedback to Anna is uh, very welcome. Uh, I can pick on people as I have done many times in the past, but we can hold for like 10 seconds to find a volunteer. Everybody still awake out there? Yeah, I was just um, I was just thinking uh, if if the the saying uh, don't ask for allowance, but rather ask for forgiveness was true. It's uh, it, once in a life. It's true here. I think just just don't ask too many people. Just do what you're doing until you hit the uh, you hit somebody. Probably you will never even hit somebody. Yeah, I agree. And I think the the ship storm fear and the talk about what could go wrong is super over exaggerated. Because I mean, yeah. mostly what actually happens when you start working is that with this is that. Nothing happens. I mean, first, <laughs> that's the worst thing. That nobody in the world actually reacts on on the on the great effort that you're putting into this. And uh, and and um, and I would say most of the people, like 99.999 percent of of the specialists and the employees I've worked with, actually like their work and want it to go well for the organization they work for. They are not interested in going out on the internet and making a mess. If I may add to you, and, and um, working for such a large company as TCS and heading internal comms, which belongs to corporate communications somehow, and also heading employer brand, I'm, I'm sitting between chairs. So at least for my organization, I can say I disagree to move the management of the brand ambassadors completely to HR because in that case or in our case HR and legal are sitting close to each other and if I would let them move drive it nothing would happen um, except for some few exceptions um, and second um, for example my strategy for the forthcoming year is that I will um, educate and train my, my executive stakeholders for certain areas to become community managers. Because um, nowadays it's not me anymore in internal communications driving the communication. I'm just, you know, orchestrating it somehow. So I'm not the one and I'm also not the workbench just, you know, editing content and sharing it out. So that's old fashioned and it's no longer the path we will pr proceed on. But uh, in educating my stakeholders to be community managers for a specific selected target audience to them um, would ease their process, would make them uh, bring them closer. And um, when driving it from inside out, I would also ease my brand ambassadors to, to feel comfortable 
uh, acting and communicating outside of the organization. So I will start internally because we also need those uh, heroes or whatever they are called in multiple enterprises internally to share those stories, to share how to evolve in diversity and inclusion, to, to give insight and be more transparent. And I think that's all about transparency, about trust and about um, orchestrating change somehow. So I start with communications, being an, a communication specialist, and I start internally moving it to the external. So those borders between internal and ex uh, external become more fluent. That sounds good, because if you can take corporate communications and turn it from a bear into a nice puppy, I mean, that's the best in the whole world. If you can do that with the within the, the head of the of I move in my, my European bubble. I don't ask for approval from corporate communications. <laughs> Excellent. I think we have time for uh, one final question, comment, reflection where authenticity goes to die. Some excellent slides also. Uh, I like the, you know, the slide with the gun on and then asking for volunteers. <laughs> um, yeah, actually what, hap what happens if you measure, if you use these EA platforms where you can measure the reach and the employee share guard of the month, and it, then you have to be careful uh, not sending a signal that it's actually not a uh, volunteer thing because if we're measured and if it's something that we're looking into then what does it mean that i do not want to participate i mean that's and and i think that's a legit question so just if you're working with these platforms and if you're if it, if, if the measuring and the kpis and the reach and the stuff is visible for everybody in the organization just bear in mind this can feel like a pressure from from some of the employees Uh, and like Peter wrote here in the chat, uh, they are nominated and we all know nomination has never worked. <laughs> uh, voluntold, I think, is the English world, word where kind of pretending to be volunteered. Uh, well, you good. are asked in a way where you cannot say no. <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny enough that usually the nominated ones are the ones which are the, which are the most considered useless, expendable. Usually, no, no, seriously, I mean, for us, at least, it's usually, it's the secretaries, because they have, have less work, so voila, let's give it to them. Oh, poor secretaries. Uh, wow. On that note, uh, thank you once again, Anna. <laughs> thank you very much for we made it right on time. Uh, as in the past, um, I'll share the slides, I'll share the notes.